Okay, this is our parachute piston ejection system here. And uh, the key components of this here are the 1.25 inch PVC pipe, uh, two couplers. Uh, one goes on the end that you see is attached. Uh, that's, that's crammed down on there about as, as far as it will go, so that's semi-permanent. Uh, it can be taken off if you need to. The other one I've left free-floating, and it's actually a part of the spring-loaded ejection system itself. And you'll see that here. So we have an extension spring. We have on the end of it, uh, just I used a, a hole saw to cut the, that round piece of wood that you'll see here. And I cut that just for the purpose of a, of a, of a, um, a guide. We want something, as, as this travels down the PVC pipe, we don't want it to flounder and flop around. That would make the ejection somewhat uh, inefficient and, um, and not give us as much power releasing our parachute. So that's just a regular uh, teacup holder. I bought that at the at the hardware store. Same with the spring. The piston rod, this gray piece that you see here, runs the entire length, all the way from here, all the way down to here. And all that is is a 99 cent uh, rod that you can buy. I, I think they use them for electrical fences, things like that. And what I've done is I've used Hartman's Rock Hard Water Putty and made a mold and just drilled a hole one half inch down through once it was actually um, once it was actually finished and enough hard enough there so I could put the rod down through and drilled a series of holes to reduce weight and also to give myself a place to put the zip tie and the zip tie is actually what holds it all together you might be able to see it down here there it is right there and the extension spring uh, has a, a round piece on it and what I've done is I've just bent that to the side you can kind of see it here it's not perfect uh, and that attaches to it and that's what makes it so the um, it, it gives it compression it gives it a, a stabilized point where everything else on it is literally moving so having said that uh, here's something that I want to bring some attention to one one of the problems I've had uh, is I don't like having my rockets you know seven or eight feet tall so I was trying to figure out a way to actually reduce the amount of um, room that I actually needed in the payload or the parachute bay. So I came up with the idea of, of this. If you pull on this, this is actually if the parachute's deploying, once it goes, this is just going to start to unravel as such. And all that you're looking at here is just a three inch extension past the top of the parachute piston. Uh, in most cases, there's a hook at the top of the piston, <clears throat> but here I'm just making use of that space. And just by a technique of, of winding this cord around the, the, the top of the piston and always running it down and then winding it upwards, running another length down and winding it back upwards, I actually get eight feet of a uh, parachute cord right onto that that piston and uh, in order to make this very mobile and to make any changes I've actually made this free floating so there's there's a little nail I'm probably going to use something else on the launch field but this whole thing can go up as you see the mark or it can go down so if you want to shorten your piston rod or use it somewhere else uh, in another rocket a smaller one or even a longer one or Whatever it may be, you can you can do that. It's not going to be a problem. So that is in essence how it works. And what happens is this coupler actually hooks up here. And gets attached there. 